Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is probably going to be one of the shorter videos on my channel, but I'm doing this case because it is so important to get Vanessa's information out there in the best way that I know how. This is a very recent case with not a ton of information and there's a lot of conflicting information, but it's one of those cases that has just been completely ignored. It has not gotten the attention that it deserves and I truly believe that if we can get enough eyes on her case, that we can do a lot to help Vanessa's case get some traction. We need to put pressure on those investigating her case and let them know that we will not stop until her case gets the attention that it deserves. Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to go ahead and make you aware of a GoFundMe that the family has set up to help search for Vanessa. If you have even a couple of dollars to donate to her case, I would be so appreciative of any help that you can give. They have also built a website that gives you a ton of updates, photos of her, information about who she was as a person, places to donate, and places to send in tips. So please, if you do nothing else, make sure to go ahead and check out those. This case definitely needs the extra help. The way that it's been handled is absolutely appalling. But with all of that being said, let's just get into Vanessa's case and go over the information that we know. Vanessa Gillen is 20 years old and is described by friends and family as caring, supportive, brave, and so, so strong. She played varsity soccer in high school and was incredibly smart, graduating at the top 15% of her class. She loved running, working out, playing soccer with her friends, going to the gym, and basically doing whatever she could to stay as active as possible. After graduating high school, she joined the military so that she could put her own life at risk so that she could serve and protect her country. Initially, she absolutely loved her time in the army when she was stationed in North Carolina, but around the time of her disappearance, she was a private first class stationed at Fort Hood in Killeen, Texas. After being stationed there though, she no longer had a love for her life in the army. Unfortunately, despite her dedication to protecting and serving others, Fort Hood failed to protect one of their own. Now, in the weeks leading up to Vanessa's disappearance, her and her mom had spoken and her mother said that she noticed that she was acting a little bit different. She noticed that Vanessa had become a little bit more withdrawn and started telling her about having sleeping problems when in the past, she never seemed to have any sort of sleeping problems. And her mother knew her better than anyone else knew her, so she knew at this point that something had to be wrong. Finally, Vanessa admitted to her mother that she was being sexually harassed by one of her sergeants at Fort Hood. Her mom tried to get her to tell her the name of the man who was harassing her, but she was too afraid of getting in trouble, so she refused to tell her mom the name of the man who was harassing her. So her mother told her that she would report this for her, but she actually told her that she knew about several other female soldiers who were being harassed by this same man who did report it, but the U.S. Army did not believe them and didn't do anything about it. She explained to her mom that this man would follow her whenever she would run and do her workouts and this made her extremely uncomfortable. Again, her mom wanted to intervene and put a stop to this, but Vanessa said that she could handle it and take care of all of it herself. And she really thought that she could, but unfortunately after this, she hasn't been seen or heard from by anyone and it seems like no one cares and no one is doing anything about it. So now let's go over the details of Vanessa's disappearance. She went missing just a few months ago on April 22nd of this year. Her sister Myra had said that the last time the two had spoken was on Tuesday afternoon, the day before she went missing. The two had spoken about Vanessa getting a new car and Vanessa was really excited about this and her sister said that overall Vanessa was in very good spirits. Then Myra said that Vanessa had spoken to her boyfriend on Wednesday, the day that she went missing, in the morning right before she went into work, and according to him as well, she was happy and was acting completely normally. But when he had texted her several times throughout the day, as he always had, all of the messages were going undelivered, even at lunchtime when she would literally always text him every single day. So them going undelivered, as many people with iPhones knows, 
basically means that there either is something wrong with their cell service or that they're not connected to the internet or that their phone had died or it was turned off. So because of this, he contacted Myra to go ahead and let her know that he could not get a hold of Vanessa. So of course, she then called Vanessa and she called her several times, but all of these calls were going straight to voicemail, which again, either means that her phone died or that it was shut off. On the day that she went missing, she had actually been working in the armory room. Now, there's a little bit of conflicting information to where she was actually last seen, but according to her sister in an interview that she did with Nancy Grace, she was last seen in the parking lot of the Regimental Engineer Squadron Headquarters 3rd Cavalry Regiment at Fort Hood at around 1 p.m. After her disappearance, they had actually found her car keys, her barracks room key, her ID, and her wallet still in the armory room, but her cell phone was not there with those other items. Her car was also found still at Fort Hood. So given the fact that she was last seen in the parking lot and then knowing what items were later found in the armory room, it can make you assume that she did not need those specific items on her person, but that she didn't want to leave without her cell phone and it shows that she probably most likely was meaning to return to the armory room. But there's also a conflicting information about when she was last seen. Now, like I said, she was reportedly last seen around one, but we know that her phone was turned off at around noon when her boyfriend was texting her and her sister tried calling her. So even this information is very spotty, but we at least know that it was sometime between noon and one. Now, one person from Fort Hood kind of explained that there aren't very many surveillance cameras at Fort Hood, so it's not very likely that she would have been caught on any sort of surveillance video, so that can explain why there's so many discrepancies in the timeline. I also want to mention that she was not wearing her military uniform when she disappeared. She was last seen wearing a black t-shirt, light purple leggings, and black Nike tennis shoes. So the thought is that maybe she left the armory room to go work out and run at around lunchtime, and that's why she was wearing that outfit and didn't take those specific belongings with her. So right when they realized that Vanessa may be missing, her sister and her mother tried using Find My iPhone to track her down, but it actually said no location found for 24 hours. So they had no way of finding her that way. So they contacted her cell phone company directly. And of course, there was also discrepancies as to where her phone last pinged and when compared to what police had told them. So police had told Myra that her phone last pinged in Belton, which is about 20 miles away from Fort Hood the day that she disappeared. However, they later changed that statement and said that the last time that her phone pinged was actually at Fort Hood. Her cell phone company also said that the last time her cell phone pinged was at Fort Hood. But they also said that the last time it pinged was at 5.45 p.m., which is hours after it was known to have been shut off. Now, in order to even get into Fort Hood, you have to be inspected and checked in and all of that. According to Myra, they look at everyone who's in the car when you get to Fort Hood. They take everyone's fingerprints, they take your picture, they run background checks, and basically do everything that they can do to know exactly who is coming in to Fort Hood and when. Now, as we all know, we're going through a pandemic and it was at the peak in April and pretty much the entire country was in lockdown and wanted very minimal interactions with other people. Fort Hood was no exception. So because of the pandemic, they had implemented automatic ID scanners. So they would have to have some sort of an electronic access to even enter Fort Hood. They had a lot of the same precautions in place, but now there was this added component of an actual scan to enter Fort Hood or to leave Fort Hood. Also, there were no visitors allowed into the barracks or at on post housing. They had a curfew of from 10 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. every day only being allowed to travel outside in the curfew for essential reasons. So that basically says if 
no one had checked in or out at around that time, then she must have never left Fort Hood with anyone. And it also can say that whoever is responsible must still be in Fort Hood. That or someone may have left and checked out at some point during the day, but somehow made Vanessa not visible. Therefore, you know, they were not suspected. They could have either put her in the trunk or covered her up some other way. Because again, every single person that was in a car that came or left was inspected. Or I imagine that if it was someone maybe very higher up who didn't want to be inspected and somehow was able to leave without leaving an electronic footprint or being suspicious or telling, you know, some workers that, you know, this shouldn't be tracked or something like that. I'm sure stuff like that can happen. Um, I'm not 100% sure, obviously, that's just speculation, but I feel like that could be possible. I think any of these things should be considered as of right now since we really don't really have that much information. So some people have speculated that Vanessa's boyfriend could be responsible. Him and Vanessa had been together for about four or five years, but apparently he would never really visit Fort Hood. Vanessa would always leave and go visit the family at home in Houston, which was about a three and a half mile drive away. Her family says that her boyfriend is not in the military, so there's no way he would have been in Fort Hood without anyone knowing, especially with the long drive, you know, they would have been able to track his cell phone pings, the three and a half hour drive away. They have also said that he is just as affected by this as anyone else in the family, and he's literally so torn up inside that he can barely even talk. So I just wanted to address that really quickly to kind of get rid of the thought that the boyfriend could be responsible because there's absolutely nothing pointing towards him being responsible and the family very, very, very strongly believes that he had nothing to do with it. So as you can tell, there is not a lot of information and a lot of the information that we do have is honestly very spotty and conflicting. It's very clear that there is a lot of vital information missing. It seems like the only people coming out and voicing their concerns are her family. No one from the base is saying anything as far as I've seen, which to me is very concerning. It seems like there's nobody really investigating, and if there is anyone investigating, they aren't saying anything, so you have to imagine that there has to be some reason why. What do her coworkers have to say who saw her that day? What about any friends that she had on the base? What about anyone else who had seen her? We have no idea what any of them had to say or if there is anyone else. I mean, this is a very confined area as you can imagine, so it's just hard to believe that somehow no one else on the base saw her and there's so much conflicting information that you wonder, how is that even possible? So that brings me to one of the main possibilities in this case. So apparently Vanessa's mother had a conversation with the sergeant about her daughter. Not the same one who was thought to have sexually harassed her, but a different one, I would think. This sergeant would not give up his name under any circumstances because he said that if anyone found out that he was talking to her, he believed that he would be killed. But according to this anonymous sergeant, he said they kidnapped your daughter inside and the corruption is horrible and there's tunnels. It just seems like a case where nothing is being done because there's so much corruption and no one wants to talk so no one is doing anything. So because of this, the family has taken matters into their own hands and has created their own search parties. More than 60 family members and friends came together at Miller Springs in Temple, Texas to search for Vanessa on May 30th. They searched a massive area just to try and cover as much land as they possibly could. It's very frustrating because a spokesperson for Fort Hood came out with a statement saying that the army is doing their own investigation and has sent out 500 soldiers from the 3rd Cavalry Regiment to search for her on foot around the area, but clearly it seems that Fort Hood has really no interest in finding Vanessa whatsoever. The obvious step is to bring in sniffer dogs, track down her scent, talk to witnesses or pretty much anyone on base who knew her and could give any information about where she could possibly be. 
put out information to the public to keep on the lookout for her, but that doesn't seem like anything like that is being done whatsoever, at least that we know about, and at least not what the family knows about. No one knows anything because Fort Hood refuses to give up absolutely any information. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, she told her mother that she was being sexually harassed. So that's the main idea in this case. The family believes that she was being harassed. Maybe she tried to put a stop to it. Maybe she made too much noise advocating for herself and other alleged victims. Maybe she made some sort of threat to go to someone even higher up. I really don't know, but at this point, the main theory is that her sergeant or someone else close to him caused her to go missing for some reason related to the sexual harassment that she had reported to her mother. I also want to point out that at the beginning of the video, I talked about how Vanessa told her mom that her sergeant would follow her around and be kind of a creep while she was running. And she was last seen wearing workout clothes before lunch, which is very possibly when she was going to work out. Her sister said that she loved running outside and that she a lot of times would use her lunch break to go ahead and work out. So I think it could be a safe assumption that she was going to work out at that lunch break and it's just kind of a weird coincidence that that's also when she happened to go missing after telling her mother that the sergeant would be creepy when she was going to work out. Obviously, we can't say for sure whether that's a sign of the sergeant being responsible or anything like that, but I did just want to make that known. I don't really want to speculate any further than this since this is really such a recent case and there's just not a lot of information. This is one of those cases that I probably will end up making several videos on following up so that I can keep you guys updated with everything that's going on. I imagine that there's going to be a lot more information coming out in the following months, or at least I hope. We cannot let Vanessa's case just fall into the back burner. We have to demand that her case be looked into further and demand that Fort Hood come forward with any information that they know and come forward with what they're hiding. Normally, I wouldn't do a video on such a recent case just because, again, we really don't know a lot. And I don't want to be grasping at straws and, you know, coming up with accusations or theories that really are not based on a lot of information since we don't know much. But with this case in particular, there's such a lack of concern and there's such a lack of anyone doing anything. And I think that I could use my voice and my channel and my audience to spread her name out there and get more eyes on her case. Vanessa is absolutely beautiful and vibrant and so full of life and all she ever wanted to do was serve others. We need to figure out where she is, what happened to her, and make those responsible pay. I want to hope that she's alive out there and that she's okay, and I'm desperately hoping that I can come to you guys with an update video saying that she was found and everything is okay. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I also want to speak really quick on the huge elephant in the room and in this case, the fact that a young woman who was in the army was being sexually harassed and no one cared. This is an issue that is rampant throughout the country, but especially in male-dominated fields. This behavior seems to go unchecked by their peers, and especially when it's someone in a position of power harassing someone who is below them. This is yet another case of a victim trying to come forward, but being shushed or being not believed or whatever the case might be. She felt that she couldn't come forward with these accusations because she didn't want to get in trouble and she should not have felt like that. She should have been able to do her job and do what she needed to do without fear that she was going to get in trouble for someone harassing her, for someone doing something to her. Even if the sergeant had nothing to do with it and that's just a huge coincidence, which I don't think that's the case at all. I'm just saying that for, you know, sake of argument, even if he's not responsible at all, she is still another victim of sexual abuse that the country and the army seem to conveniently ignore. Her case is uncomfortable. It hasn't been reported on very much, and that just proves that 
we have a problem in this country that no one wants to acknowledge. Women should be able to go into fields and protect and serve, or really any other male-dominated field. They should be able to go into their job and feel comfortable knowing that they can do what they need to do without their lives being in danger at the hands of their coworkers. Women should be allowed to walk into work and feel safe, but all too often that is not the reality and something needs to change. And Vanessa is a very clear example of that. Vanessa Gillen is a 20-year-old soldier stationed at Fort Hood in Texas. She was last seen on April 22nd at around 1 p.m. in the parking lot of her regimental engineer squadron headquarters on Fort Hood. She is of Hispanic descent, five feet, two inches tall, 126 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. Vanessa was last seen wearing a black shirt, light purple leggings, and black Nike tennis shoes. Vanessa has a tattoo of a cross with a flower on her left arm, another flower also on the left arm, and a mountain with a circle on her upper left shoulder. She has a small mole between her lower mouth and her chin. The family is asking that if you have absolutely any information regarding Vanessa's whereabouts, to please contact 832-651-9128 or 713-885-7510. Both numbers will be listed in the description as always. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they do have a GoFundMe page and I ask that you go ahead and donate if you can. I also will be linking her missing persons Facebook page, which is constantly being updated with new information. So if you want to follow her case, please go ahead and check out that page. Also, like I said in the beginning of the video, the family has also built an entire website called findvanessagillen.com that has a ton of information about her disappearance, updates on her case, pictures of her, information about who she was, places to donate, and places to leave an anonymous tip. So please make sure to go ahead and check out that website as well. This is such an important case to share with everyone, so please feel free to share this video or any of the links down below. If nothing else, please at least share the website that the family put so much time and effort into building. We will not let Vanessa's disappearance be lost in the news cycle, and we will not be quiet. But anyways, thank you guys so much for listening to Vanessa's story and sharing information about her case. Like I said, I will be keeping you guys updated on this case, so make sure to come back and check for that. Make sure to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for new true crime content every single week. Don't forget to follow my Twitter and Instagram, both be linked down below. I will also be sharing updates probably smaller updates to my Twitter and Instagram, so make sure to go ahead and follow those. If you have absolutely any case suggestion, please make sure to go ahead and send those over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. I read every single case suggestion that I get, and every video that I cover here on my channel is directly from that email or my Patreon. But with that, I hope you guys have a great week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!